This is the OnePlus 8 Pro, the company's answer to the premium Android flagship market. Notice I mentioned flagship, and the reason for that is back in the day, OnePlus was known for marketing their smartphones as flagship killers at really good price points, but they didn't necessarily excel in every aspect that made a true flagship smartphone. I think I said flagship like 50 times, but anyways, things have turned around this year. The 8 Pro starts at $900 US or $1,400 Canadian. It's the most expensive phone that they've come out with. It's meant to compete with the Galaxy S20 series, the Huawei P40 Pro, maybe even the iPhones if you were to consider that as competition in an Android space, but that's totally up to you. Uh, it's been about four months since OnePlus announced the 8 Pro and I've been using it extensively over the course of that time period. And as always, OnePlus did roll out some amazing software updates that addressed a lot of the issues that users were experiencing, but I've still got my beef with the 8 Pro. So let's discuss that right after we pay some bills. It's true what they say about the Corsair A100. We've got water-cooled hardware for cool temperatures, a cool design that stands out with plenty of good I.O. It's whisper quiet with an efficient fan and occupies as much space on my desk as my plant. The Corsair A100, up to 16 cores with a 2080 Ti. It does not disappoint. Check it out below. All right, let's start with the design. It's a subtle improvement over the 7 Pro, but they've added some tasteful colors to make it stand out from the competition, without going too aggressive, of course. I've got the ultramarine blue model, and it looks amazing. They've given it a matte texture that's soft to the touch, and it doesn't get super reflective. The camera bump is tolerable, especially when you compare it to the Note 20 Ultra, for instance. If it really bothers you, I'd recommend picking up the carbon bumper case. It's pretty slim and gives a nice snug fit for the phone. I've been rocking this for a while and I really like it. The corners are rounded and the build quality is fantastic. The phone is sandwiched in between two sheets of Gorilla Glass with a solid aluminum frame and it's exactly what you would expect at this price point. They ditched the pop-up selfie camera on the 7 Pro for the classic punch hole style on the left side of the display. I personally don't mind that, but I'd like to know your thoughts about that. Unfortunately, you're still getting a curved display, which I'm typically not a fan of because I've had numerous issues with palm rejection when I'm browsing through the app drawer or checking mail, especially when using the phone in one hand. It'll just automatically open another app or select another option uh, when my palm gets in contact with the screen. Not to mention, this is a really big phone. It's The screen spans across 6.78 inches. It's about the same size as the Note 20 Ultra, so it's pretty difficult to reach the top spots. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you're someone with smaller hands, you should probably look elsewhere. Or if you're used to bigger phones and if you're perfectly fine using something like this, just be prepared to do a lot of this. A lot of shifting, you know? Although you just wanna make sure that you don't drop your phone because that's the last thing you want. Speaking of the display, OnePlus has packed the 8 Pro with a fast 120 hertz quad HD AMOLED panel. And for those of you wondering, it can do both quad HD and 120 hertz at the same time, unlike some other phones. <coughs> Samsung. And guys, I really enjoyed my time with this display. Every animation when it comes to opening or exiting an app, the gesture navigation through the operating system is fluid and fast. It dynamically adjusts the refresh rate depending on the type of content you stare at. For example, if you're watching movies or reading an article online, it circled back to 60 hertz to preserve battery life. The only odd thing I noticed was when browsing YouTube. Scrolling through content felt like using a 60 hertz display. I had no issues with consistency on my Pixel 4 XL and the Note 20 Ultra. I just thought it was worth mentioning. It's also a very bright screen. If you enable auto brightness, the screen boosts to a whopping 1300 nits when you're in direct sunlight, of course. So outdoor visibility is great. It's one of my favorite features of this phone since I've been spending quite a bit of time outdoors during the summer. It's got great color accuracy, love the different color profiles that you can play around with through the settings. I think you're really in for a treat, especially if you're used to watching a lot of videos on your smartphone or if you edit photos for Instagram or other social media platforms. Initially, I did have some issues with the display, so I was, ex I was experiencing a weird green cast at the lowest brightness setting, but thankfully, that was addressed through a software update, so good job, OnePlus. The in-display fingerprint sensor is still present on the 8 Pro. If you recall watching my 7 Pro review, I mentioned how the sensor on that was really fast and accurate. My success rate was really, really high on that phone, but I can't say the same thing about the 8 Pro because I found myself constantly struggling to get past the lock screen. Uh, even with my left thumb or my right thumb, it just errors out every single time. So I had to 
constantly relying on the you know so-called unsecured face unlock system which isn't as advanced or secure as say something like the pixel 4 um, it was really frustrating i tried to rescan my thumbprint it didn't really do a lot so that was really weird not to mention this is something very important if you pull out this phone in pitch black it's going to blind you literally because uh, it has to shine a bright light to analyze your fingerprint and it just gets super annoying. Even if you have a uh, night mode or the blue screen filter enabled, it won't actually show up on the lock screen. In fact, it will only trigger itself when you get past that home screen or the lock screen uh, to get into your home screen, which is just, it's weird, but it's also really it's annoying. The built-in speakers are fantastic. Just like the 7 Pro, the 8 Pro features a dual speaker setup with the earpiece acting as your left channel and the bottom facing as your right. So there's excellent stereo imaging. It gets really loud and I never missed any alarms, so I guess that's a good thing. Uh, I also appreciate OnePlus for keeping the alert slider on the side. This thing has come in clutch so many times and I really hope other brands implement this on their smartphones. Uh, the haptic motor underneath is all right, it's certainly not as strong as Uncle Sammy. Glancing over the rest of the specs, well, as always, OnePlus never disappoints. You're getting a really fast Snapdragon 865 SoC. It's not the Plus chip, but uh, it's not really a big deal. RAM is plenty sufficient with 8 gigabytes base or 12 gigabytes if you really want to push it. And storage is either 128 or 256 gigabytes. And this phone just flies through applications. I didn't experience any slowdowns or any stutters from my general day-to-day -day usage. Uh, apps installed really fast on this phone, thanks to the UFS 3.0 storage. Uh, I think I can't really complain about the performance on the OnePlus 8 Pro. It all comes down to the amazing uh, software integration and support that OnePlus has for their devices. Speaking of software, well, there isn't anything new here if you're familiar with Oxygen OS. You get plenty of customization options and I really like the stock look. That being said, OnePlus is shifting the direction away from this UX design to something that's a little bit more user-friendly. In fact, I made a separate video going over the beta build that OnePlus is currently working on, which is based on Android 11. And if you're interested in checking it out, link will be right over here. I also wanna mention the amazing software support that you get with OnePlus devices. Not just the 8 Pro, but the 7 series, the 6 series, heck, even the 5 series. Uh, early adopters just get to share their experience and if they encounter any issues, they'll post it on the forums. And OnePlus, as they're constantly listening to user feedback, they address those issues through software updates. Now, before I get into camera performance, I do wanna talk about battery life. OnePlus gave the 8 Pro an extra 500 million hours compared to the 7 Pro. So now you're looking at roughly 4,500 million hours. I think they did this to compensate for the 120 Hertz display. My phone usage is obviously gonna be different from everyone out there, but I'm happy to report that I've been getting really good battery life out of this smartphone. I was easily able to get two days worth of use with light usage. Now keep in mind that I've enabled dark mode full time on this phone, so that definitely helps extend battery life. Also, my light usage consists of casually checking Twitter, browsing through Instagram. I don't really watch a lot of videos. It's mostly messaging and, and just casual stuff. Uh, and I did test a smartphone during the COVID lockdown season, so I never really got a chance to travel and put this to the real test. But uh, hey, if you want ROG Phone 3 or Phone 2 level battery life, uh, this won't cut it. I mean, it's 4,500 milliamp hours, 120 Hertz, it's good. It's pretty good. But if you need to top it up quickly, don't you worry because OnePlus has got your back with their blistering fast Warp Charge 30T. Simply plug in the phone and it'll charge the device from zero to 50% in just 20 minutes. And if you wanna take things a bit further, you can wirelessly charge the 8 Pro using the Warp Charge 30 wireless dock, which is sold separately, by the way. And that charges the phone from zero to 50% in 30 minutes. This charger is really a unique piece of tech. It comes with a fan to help dissipate the heat because it's charging at a rapid pace. And it gets as loud as 30 decibels, which on paper, might not seem quiet, but it's really not ideal when you have it beside your bed. Luckily, there is a setting on the phone that can turn off the fan, but that will obviously reduce charging speeds. I mean, look, you don't have to spend $70 on a fancy piece of charger. In fact, you can actually buy one right now because it's out of stock at the moment. You can still experience wireless charging on the 8 Pro because this still uses the Qi protocol. So it'll work with basically any Qi enabled wireless chargers that you may have lying around. So that's welcoming. 
Uh, this phone also supports reverse wireless charging, but oddly, it won't charge my Pixel Buds. I did look this up online, and it seems like this phone is a little bit picky when it comes to charging devices. Um, it did charge my Note 20 Ultra, so yeah, it's weird, but hey, it's definitely a feature that I personally won't take advantage of. All right, last but not least, let's talk about the camera performance. The 8 Pro features a quad camera setup. So there's a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, a 48 megapixel standard wide angle lens, and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom and up to 30x digital zoom. There is a color filter camera, which offers different filters and other gimmicky tricks. Remember Photochrome? There was a huge buzz about that mode being able to see through certain plastic materials and certain clothing material. People were really concerned about it, but OnePlus did roll out an update eventually uh, to address that issue. So uh, it, yeah, you can't really see through plastic anymore. At least I tried and I can't. So it's good news, but also bad news for people who thought it was cool. But then also it was really weird. So, yeah. But either way, let's start with the ultra wide. I'm just gonna say this right now, guys. The 8 Pro has one of the best, if not the best ultra wide angle camera, period. It's way, way better than the Galaxy S20 series. The dynamic range is incredible. The detail is spot on and it performs extremely well in low light scenarios as well. The field of view is perfect to get creative and I really, really enjoyed my time using this lens. Switching over to the standard wide angle camera and things get even better. OnePlus is using Sony's highest end IMX 689 sensor and it nails white balance perfectly. I absolutely fell in love with the colors being captured by the sensor. HDR processing works really well without being too aggressive. There's a good balance between saturation and contrast and the detail is astounding. You can really take advantage of the 48 megapixel sensor for larger prints, if that's something that you're into. And given that it's a larger sensor with a wider aperture, the depth of field is natural, so you don't have to rely on portrait mode. In low light, the sensor does bend itself to produce 12 megapixel images, and that's done to reduce noise, and the results look great. I wouldn't say it's pixel level good, but I'll tell you this, it definitely puts Samsung's highest end S20 Ultra to shame. The telephoto lens, wow, just wow. This phone continues to surprise me, guys. I'm a huge fan of playing around with higher focal lengths because you can end up with some really cool compositions, especially if you wanna get into product photography. I didn't notice any shutter lag with all three sensors, so that helped with capturing the right moment. The macro mode on this camera is just nuts. I had a lot of fun with this mode, though I didn't use it that much, but hey, it won't disappoint you if you're really into it. The selfie camera is mediocre. I wasn't impressed with the results. If you're patient enough, you can get away with some good shots. If you really like taking a lot of selfies, you should probably look elsewhere. All right, so this is the video test on the OnePlus 8 Pro. I'm gonna start with the front-facing camera. One of the things I'm not a fan of is the fact that you're not getting a wide-angle sensor, so it's pretty cropped in. I'm actually stretching my hands all the way to make sure that I'm in frame. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. The dynamic range is all right. It's not really that great, but under good lighting conditions, you can get some pretty decent results. Uh, what's really cool with the rear-facing cameras is that you can use all three sensors uh, to shoot 4K video, whether if it's using the wide-angle, ultra-wide, or even the telephoto. Stabilization is also really, really nice. I'm surprised by the footage coming out of this camera. Uh, it's definitely an improvement over the OnePlus 7 Pro. And I want to know your thoughts about that in the comments. So, did OnePlus deliver a true flagship Android smartphone this year that's worthy enough to compete with the thousand plus dollar smartphones that are currently in the market. Absolutely. The 8 Pro features an amazing build quality and design. Uh, the screen is one of the best. The battery life is also really good, even with 120 hertz mode enabled full time. Uh, the specs are top of the line. You now have support for wireless charging, finally, on a OnePlus device. I'm sure a lot of OnePlus fans would love that. And uh, it's also got an official IP68 water resistant rating. Not to mention the camera performance. It's incredible. Uh, honestly, I would legit put this right underneath the Pixel 4 and way above the Galaxy S20 series because the results really do speak for themselves. With that being said, I've still got my issues with this phone. The first thing is, of course, that curved display. It doesn't really do any justice when you're using the phone. Palm detection is really, really bad. It gets super frustrating. Uh, also, the fingerprint sensor, it just didn't work for me. And honestly, the fact that it blinds you in pitch black is just super annoying. 
I honestly at this point wished if, you know, OnePlus was able to just go back to the traditional standard rear facing fingerprint sensor. I mean, I would hands down get that over something like an in-display fingerprint sensor because it's physical, it's easy to reach, it's practical. I also can't ignore some of the quality control issues that some users have been experiencing with the 8 Pro, uh, specifically when it comes to the display. Uh, also, some users have been experiencing Wi-Fi problems as well, connectivity problems to be more precise. OnePlus is constantly working on addressing that through software updates. So I guess that's a good thing. Finally, I want to talk about the price. $900, it's a lot of money. But I think for that price, you are getting a lot in terms of features. Uh, I think, you know, it's priced aggressively and compared to the competition, this thing, it stands out. It really does. Now, generally, OnePlus phones don't go on sale that often, but when they do, it's worth picking up. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you are an existing OnePlus 8 user, I want to know your experience using the phone. Has it been great or has it been not so great? Looking forward to your thoughts and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.